What up, peeps? I got the Manitou Mara Pro. The Mara Pro is the flagship rear shock from Manitou. If you've never heard of Manitou, they're a smaller brand from the United States, and they do things very different from everybody else. Most notable on this shock, it has a super long piggyback, unlike any other shock on the market. Taking a look at the adjuster knobs, they have to do things different. So the red knob, that's the compression circuit, and the blue knob is the rebound circuit. So I dug this setup guide out of the Manitou website. There is a massive red flag. This shock can only take 250 PSI, so I'm very concerned at this point because I typically ride about 300 PSI in every shock I ride. Since most people would be familiar with the Fox Float X2, let's hold it up to the Manitou for some size comparison. The Manitou Mara has a more conventional style of the stanchion sliding up into the main body of the shock, but overall they're relatively the same size. Now the stanchion of the X2 is 32 millimeters and the Mara Pro is a little bit smaller at about 28 millimeters. As far as build quality goes, the Manitou can hold its own against Fox and it seems like a very high quality shock when you have it in your hand. Now checking the Manitou Mara Pro up close, this is a high quality shock. The manufacturing that went into this was very impressive. When adjusting the compression, the red knob, a little backwards, but normal for Manitou, it feels very high quality. It gives you a nice click defined feel as you turn it. As far as turning the rebound knob, it's not quite as defined. You can't quite feel the detents within the spring. The Manitou features standard DU bushings that come in nearly every single shock except for Fox. Because of the unique upper eyelid on the Manitou Mara, it was quite challenging to push the DU bushing out. You had to perfectly center it on the shock in order for the DU bushing to be pushed out. So because Fox hardware is the easiest to use, I basically put it inside of every single shock because you can push it in by hand. On the bottom of the piggyback, there's a very easy to use air filling valve for the IFP. Basically there's air pressure in here. The rebuild manual calls for 300 PSI and I only had 143, so I'm gonna put it back to the 300. It's super important to make sure your IFP is full of air because as I've learned, it can make your shock cavitate. So the only normal thing about this shock is basically putting it inside of your bike and everything is normal. The stanchion spins around so you can isolate it and put it in the right orientation for your bicycle. The breakaway pressure of the Mara Pro is very impressive. This tells me it has a large negative air chamber. A large negative air chamber will make a more plush ride. Now, if you've ever installed new shocks on your bike, it's super important to depress it all the way into the travel to make sure nothing rubs. I like to make life easy, so I take some cardboard and write 30% on the cardboard. Basically, this is like my sag indicator tool. So filling the Manitou up and setting your sag is a unique experience. Basically, pump the shock up to 100 PSI and check your sag. You'll be completely shocked by how little air pressure this shock takes to get your 30% sag. I have no idea how they got away with running such low air pressure, but somehow they did. Having never seen a Manitou Mara in person, I had my doubts. But equipped on my 57 pound bike, it looks like it's up to the task. She's a big heavy duty shock that I think's gonna handle my bike very good. So when pushing the shock into the travel and jumping off the bike, it does have a bit of a top out noise. I don't know how that's going to affect riding, but let's check it out. So first impression, I absolutely don't know what to expect, but the first thing you should know is it makes a lot of noise and the shock is very linear. So I pulled over and started adding some compression to the shock, but it was a little bit frustrating because the compression knobs are not labeled. Fortunately, you have a smartphone in your pocket and you can pull up the user guide and instantly find which knob is which and you don't need any tools, so that's absolutely great. The inner star is the high speed compression. It features eight clicks and the low speed is the outer knob and it has 20. So let's go ride it with a little bit of compression added. So the Manitou is very responsive to rider input and it runs on super low air pressure. I was at like 220, so I could move the rebound two clicks from dead slow, which is an absolute miracle anytime I'm not on dead slow. Very impressive performance on the first run. So this shock is like a dance party. You could just blow through all the travel and create the most amazing pop you have ever rode. 
And let me tell you, this is my small bump sensitivity test and this shock is very impressive. I watched this YouTube video and it has a special flexible IFP that allows you to get more small bump sensitivity out of a smaller shock. Now the otter can just leave something alone, so I'm gonna lower the pressure way down and crank the compression way up and see if I can turn it into a Fox float X2. Now with 50% compression on and low pressure, I nearly crash right here because the shock just didn't feel right. It was all over the place. If you ever feel sketchy on a shock, just slow the rebound down. You're less likely to crash, so I'm gonna try it with a dead slow rebound. With the dead slow rebound and lower pressure, the shock was not impressive. Very good lesson to learn here. This shock is very, very sensitive to air pressure. It even says it inside of the setup guide, add three PSI at a time to adjust the air pressure. Because the shock felt better with a faster rebound, more air pressure, and just a pinch of compression, I went back to my baseline settings and took it out for another run. With the baseline 30% sag back in, all the magic had returned to the shock. The Mara Pro is the definition of a high performance set it and forget it shock. The compression damping is very impressive. Now it takes some time for this shock to grow on you, but let me tell you, it's up to the task of your 50 pound e-bikes with no problem. And it's so responsive to rider input. I just really starting to like this guy. One of the claims of this shock is its simplicity and home mechanic friendliness. So of course we're gonna try to take it apart. So checking the instructions out, I was kind of like, what is this? They do everything different. Release the pressure from the shock, but they want you to use this $129 tool. The biggest spanner I had was 32 millimeters and the ring around the air can is 33 millimeters, but don't worry because you can use a strap wrench. Now the instructions say to depress the shock and unscrew the air can as to not damage the threads. I don't think you need to do that, but I did it anyway. Popping the air can off, Everything inside, as per usual with Manitou, is very different. I'm not sure if these are tokens or spacers, but the manufacturing inside of this is very good. The outer compression lever slides off with a screwdriver, but the inner one is gonna need a special tool. The shock is very simple for a home mechanic, but you gotta spend a ton of money on tools. This isn't uncommon for suspension. Every shock needs a special set of tools, and it's kind of a bummer, but kind of the normal. The goal was to get to the shim stacks, but unfortunately at every turn I needed a special tool. You need a freewheel tool to get to the IFP, and I only have a cassette tool. Kind of interesting they use a freewheel tool for this, but maybe it's a space constraint. There was no reason to take the outer air can off to access the negative chamber because Manitou has perfectly dialed in the negative and positive air chambers for a perfect ride. My only real complaint with this shock, it's a little bit strange visually and you need to be careful of that long piggyback on certain bikes. I would be so much more satisfied with this shock than a Super Deluxe and I definitely recommend it. I'm not sure why, but these unconventional old school shocks are just really awesome. So click the video on the screen to find another one.